So, who's got a Chromebook? Oh, pretty good showing, okay. <laughs> who's got a MacBook? All right, who's got a Windows book? With them? Uh, no, not necessarily with you. Okay, <laughs> who's, who's just here to hackle? <laughs> <laughs> good, okay, hacklers are also, well, okay, you're welcome, but anybody who's like, if they're hackling too much, you guys can like, heckle back. And so, <clears throat> all right. So we're here to kind of uh, noodle around the Chromebook and, and how to get it. Can this thing give me a bash prompt? That's what it, that's what it, what we're going to take a look at for the next uh, uh, 45, 50 minutes. And um, so I think a little bit, this is uh, a little brief down from the, the full summary. But um, recently, and I'm sure you know about this uh, too well, but I don't want to. <coughs> uh, put the boot in too much to uh, other machines. Uh, folks who started looking for reasonable alternatives to MacBooks. And Chromebooks, in my opinion, are, are one option to get a bash prompt. Although there are some limitations and restrictions and freedoms. Okay, so <coughs> we're going to look at the dock. Um, and uh, especially with respect to Ubuntu. And then we're going to try and summarize the options. Uh, Feel free to chip in and, as we said, hack or whatever, add to the, the combo. And, um, yeah, so that's what we want. We want a bash prompt. Okay, so <coughs> the motivation for this, I think, is probably just as important as figuring out if it all works. And so I um, I took some, I, 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 went, I had the opportunity to, uh, to go and take some CS classes at United University in 2008, and I ended up getting a MacBook Pro to do that. And um, and then I went to Google I/O in 2013 and got this nice Pixel, which I still have here, which is what I'm presenting on. And uh, and my MacBook, somewhere along the, the lines that I uh, sort of died or became like so slow it was almost dead. So I was I wanted to get a, a MacBook, the 2016 one. And uh, I think that when the MacBook came out, I was um, I was a bit disappointed with the the, the 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 machine. I actually went and purchased one. Eventually, I actually returned it to to Apple. I was in New York City at the time, returned it, and then uh, a couple of months later, it was on sale at Best Buy. They had a two-day sale. And it was like 300 bucks off, and it was like, yeah, I'm gonna get that guy at that price because I didn't see anybody having that price anywhere else. And I was like, yeah. And I didn't get the touch bar one, but um, I got friends. Even got a friend who works at Apple. Doesn't want to use that touch that touch bar at all. Uh, it's like a, a, a sort of a Vim user likes function keys, and that's what they want. And if you're okay, so it's in your muscle memory. It's hard to go from from function keys to muscle memory if that's what you've been doing for a long time. So and then. In, in my process, I don't think that's really in the right order. Windows came out and now supports Ubuntu. It's like, how the heck did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess maybe they got MacBook Envy or Linux Envy or something. And then and, uh, Android is now on Chromebooks, which adds like a, just a humongous number of additional apps. Of course, everything that is on your phone, I think they're going to need to refactor some of those because they look a little ugly when they turn up on on Chrome because they were designed for a small phone and they weren't really properly designed for a large a, a desktop. But and then another consideration here is that uh, I think this is important is that in my in my case, <coughs> I, sometimes I need to do some DevOps. Okay, and, what, and I think that what I mean by that is, uh, you know, I need to set something up in the cloud or I need to. Um, these days, do a lot less installation on my own machine as I, I need to uh, administer something in the cloud. But but really for me, I'm much more of an apps ops guy. I want to develop apps, but I only do DevOps because I need to, to get to my app. So, um, and that's a pattern I think, and, and I think maybe that's more of a pattern for me because I'm really a, a web developer, uh, sort of a web cloud developer. So that's that's my motivation. Okay, now let's look at some other people's motivation. Brett Brett Slatkin is a pretty well known uh, Googler. Uh, he, uh, he he did some. Uh, he's written a couple of nice articles 
on his blood, one, one big fluke. Um, the struggling mice, my inner crew loop, uh, a Linux laptop reboot. And so he looked, uh, he actually went down the same path, but he did more research. Um, and he looked at all of these different elements, um, running Ubuntu, this, the screen. Okay, so let's, let's go and take a quick look at his, uh, at his uh, what he did here. Let's try and make that a little bit larger. Does that go larger? Yeah. Okay, a little bit larger. So, um, likewise, a lifelong Mac user, disappointed with Apple's latest release. We searched the alternatives and uh, and then purchased a HP Spectra 13, okay, and got all this nice stuff um, and installed Ubuntu. That was easy. Um, blew off Windows 10. Um, got a lovely screen, 4K, all these goodies. Uh, got the trackpad, rattles a little bit. One sort of nice thing, actually I don't really need a trackpad. I don't know if it's anybody does see, but I still prefer to use a mouse. I like the, the, the granularity that I can be very particular about what I'm clicking on. So I, <coughs> I uh, the keyboard, uh, that's one of the other things that's been changing a little bit with um, with with uh, with uh, notebooks and MacBooks recently, we haven't quite got to the point where laptops are coming like with it with the same screen as a as a smartphone. But the lap, the new Android, sorry, the new um, MacBooks are pretty similar. They've got a very low um, key, key depress. It's very it's a very flat screen and takes a little bit of getting used to that. But anyways, I think the the, the bottom line is if, if if the other thing is like is this two in one. Sort of the ch change into a sort of a two in one type machine. But, okay, after he did all that analysis and actually used and used this, um, he got the HP uh, machine and put Ubuntu on it for a while. This uh, Spectra 360, this was his conclusion. Um, if you're in the market for a new laptop, um, I'm going to be selling my Spectra and going back to, actually, he's gone back to using a mid 2012 MacBook Air. Um, so, okay. So my 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 choice after getting uh, buying a new MacBook is a, is I still prefer my Chromebook. So I'm just going to try and convince you about what's my rationale for that. Um, by the way, he's got all sorts of cool 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 info there, and I really recommend reading through his stuff to to, to understand his logic about where he was with his decision making. Okay, where am I? Okay, so um, I think it's also like with respect to like the freedom, the, the Chromebook was developed for the just simple stuff, stuff that we do most of the time, like office stuff, web apps, email docs, media consumption, uh, sort of designed around the high res screens and such. Um, and uh, it's really, like uh, I think architecturally, I knew I did know the details a little bit better than this, but they actually built it on Chrome OS on top of a Linux OS. It's a particular Linux OS. I think it may be one that Google's um, cooked up to their to their own particular needs uh, for their own build infrastructure, but for Chromium. And now they recently mentioned a little bit earlier they added uh, Android uh, uh, apps support. So. Okay, just comparing with the MacBook, I think that's the like a desktop replacement. And um, feel, feel free to correct me, but this sort of goes back to Linux, comes through the next OS, um, Unix, next Linux, OS X, Mac OS, uh, then they does it in USB C and such. Well, I'm not quite sure why I put that in. But one thing I did notice about this is they seem to be backfitting <coughs> iOS features to OS, OS X. So, for example, when I'm using, uh, I should put Mac OS there. When I'm, I notice when I'm using the Mac these days that if I if I tap on my mag, mouse a little bit too much, sort of with nervous energy or something, all of a sudden my screen pops up and all these dialogues are there, and that's not really what I want. I want something which is a much more sort of simple OS. Don't give me any of that stuff. But again, they've um, they've got access to the iTunes uh, store, and they seem to be sort of going in that direction. 
Huh. And then Windows, okay. And uh, I think even this week, Windows <coughs> introduced a, a sort of a Chromebook compatible machine, according to some of the journalists. They've added Windows 10 S for students, which has streamlined the security and superior performance. Basically means like Chromebooks, you can't actually install too much on it apart from the apps that uh, Microsoft would like you to have on there. And um, uh, I think the general thing was it's a little bit like the MacBook. It's, it's sort of designed, and, it's, and the Chromebook Six is designed to be a premium uh, to show the other o Windows OEMs what's, what you can do with the equipment. Um, and the other, uh, the other thing that I'm, uh, just came to my mind here is that we've got a lot of touch innovations going on. You know, key keyboard, trackpad, screen, touch, and now we're at the touch bar. But maybe that's a bridge too far. So um, this is something to, 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 to give some consideration to, is that now um, Windows uh, supports um, Ubuntu through Bash. And it, you don't really need to reformat the machine or do anything special with it. It's just a couple of seconds. And um, then you can switch on any machine. Loading my screenshot there is not too great or I snapped it from somewhere. But uh, it now supports the uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. And it's, um, you actually get to um, install Ubuntu from, from a download. And um, what happens is uh, Ubuntu ends up uh, being, being able to run Ubuntu in, in user mode, not the full mode. Um, so I think there may be some provides you with a, a bash prompt, but perhaps not a full web server. So, yep. Um, it is got a um, layer between the library and the Windows kernel that presents a Linux API. Okay. So everything that is running on under Ubuntu, bash, GCC, whatever, thinks it's talking to a Linux kernel, but actually it's talking to this layer, and the layer is talking to the Windows kernel, mm. and that's how it works. But it doesn't work reliably. <laughs> Two times in my experience, and I've been working with it for about four months, I have made a simple mistake at the command line, and so messed it up <laughs> that I had to uninstall <coughs> it and reinstall it to recover. Mm. The, uh, the uh, 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 Ubuntu for Windows system. So I, I had screwed it up. It wouldn't start. Uh, all the stuff that I had saved in its little file system was gone. <laughs> and I, after the second time of doing this, back to SIGWIN. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good to know. Quick question on that, quick follow up question to that. If yes. I'm doing node development, do I have the ability to run, you know, to, 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 to start Node and get an HTTP prompt there at, at port 8080? Is that, do, do I have the full capabilities? I haven't tested it, but I see no reason why it would not okay. work. But okay. reliably? Yeah. Okay. So <coughs> I, sh I should say that the reason I'm asking that question is on the reliably, I had a plan to bring a little bit more uh, equipment with me today, but when I went to start it, it needed, it was not running. So <laughs> I decided to avoid that and just, uh, so um, yeah, this, as, as we were talking about, there's just a couple, there's two, you need to switch both of these on. You need to switch developer mode on in your, window, in your Windows 10 system. And you also need to go to the uh, system settings and switch some, an additional setting on it. Those two, if you just set one up and not the other one, uh, you, ca you can't, in it doesn't install correctly. Okay. And uh, as he said there, this is, uh, this is what it looks like, and you end up with the uh, bash prompt on Windows, and uh, that's what we're looking for. Okay. So, oh my God, I forgot Chrome. How amazing these things are. <laughs> are they really? Okay. Okay, so they are, but uh, watch that the new Chromebooks support Android. So that means if you've got a Chromebook in the room, maybe it doesn't have touch. Who, that, you know, if you get an opportunity, if you're going to buy one of these, make sure it's got a touch screen because that's, that's really going to be required for the user experience that you 
um, to get the most out of the machine if you like if you like those uh, price wise uh, I got uh, my backup machine here that I got from my wife uh, at Costco it was their deal last last year and that was like one of these uh, Acer machines Acer 14 for 229 that's kind of hard to beat to get a bash prompt um, and uh, Okay, so cost-wise, just bringing that up to speed a little bit, uh, I think you can get a nice Chromebook for uh, about $4.99. Uh, checked out this morning. Particularly this one seems to be what folks are recommending, this uh, Asus uh, 302 Flip. So it's a two-in-one. I checked out the price of the, of the nice MacBook. I picked, picked the 15-inch. I don't know if that's fair because this is not a 15-inch. but And a nice Surface Book from, from Microsoft. And they were both at that price. But even, you know, even at this price compared with this, it's quite a difference. On the other hand, if I wanted to get a nice Chromebook with 16 gigs of RAM and an M7 processor and all that stuff, then there's HP's got one for uh, 106.9. <coughs> um, so, but there's still uh, quite a bit of um, m money difference there. So I don't know if anybody <coughs> has students or like goes overseas and teaches folks to, you know, to build apps uh, in, in, in any of those other venues. But I think if you were going to do that, and if you had a limited budget, and you had a lot to accomplish for your dollar, then you know you can get a lot done for two twenty nine versus uh, twenty three ninety nine, perhaps about ten. Um, so on to give me a bash. So um, this uh, gentleman here works for Google, and actually, I'm not sure. I think this when this docker was first put out there, but the crouton, uh, the ability to crouton your machine. And um, I think that started in about 2011. And one of the problems with it is that uh, a lot of people have forked the dock and the dock is all over the, the internet. And uh, people have like tagged things onto it, uh, fixes and other, and other things. But the dock is kind of like a little bit messed up. Um, so um, I'm gonna, recommend a, a doc from a, uh, a young lady in Texas and uh, I'll come to that in a moment. Her website is Code Donut. And <coughs> there's, uh, uh, there's other options as well to get, um, I don't know if this is really, I could say this is really a bash prompt, but um, I, can, I can go out to Google and this is applied to the same to um, AWS and to Microsoft. I guess I could use that Cloud mm -hmm. Console and actually start up a virtual machine there and populate that virtual machine. But I need something to do that with. And a Chromebook will let me accomplish that. So that's another, uh, another, another thing is this, I think this may have been renamed, but Eclipse has now got a, uh, been working on a, um, a, um, a cloud version of their, of their, of their IDE. And that's available. So, okay. Let's see. So, uh, Crute on your Chromebook to run Ubuntu. So, um, this this young lady's, uh, uh, it's done like this excellent job. When it comes down to, the gentleman over here mentioned setting up uh, Windows. Um, setting up uh, Crute on your Chromebook is a little, it, it looks like it's straightforward, but it actually, and it is straightforward as long as you follow the instructions, but you can goof up a bit. Um, let's see if I can just go to that doco. So why do you want to do this? Okay, so I want to do this to get the full power of uh, Linux on my machine, and it's not. Uh, it is a. It is a full. It is a full uh, Linux. It is the full Ubuntu. <coughs> the only thing is, um, and she does mention about this. It works by creating a th root. 
sort of like virtualization, but not quite. Um, and um, so, okay, let me just give you some a uh, little bit of context there. I actually, I did this talk in in, uh, in New York at the G Google Bronx uh, uh, College at, at Newman College, and I really wanted to up upgrade. I got uh, Ubuntu on my machine. I wanted to put 16, is it 1604? I wanted to put the new version on there. So I figured out how to go to the bash prompt and I figured out how to do the upgrade and I got the upgrade to run. And then I found out that really, uh, even though I'd, I'd done that, I should have stayed on 14.4 because what happened was <laughs> I got a beautiful screen with no menus whatsoever, just like uh, a beautiful uh, purple um, Ubuntu startup screen. And uh, so what happens is that this environment this sort of uh, limits, I guess, the s the safety and security and what they can support, limits it to, to whatever they wherever whatever they want to, to allow you to run, which is just Ubuntu 14, 14.04 at this point in time. There is, I checked the um, GitHub logs and whatever, and there's talk about that they're going to support the next version or the maybe so that's in the works um, so uh, this pretty much comes down to like um, yeah you could do a, a dual boot environment but I prefer not to do that I, I guess what I found is that is that um, I like having uh, a polished Linux desktop and if I just run uh, Ubuntu, I could just blow Chrome, Chrome, Chrome OS off my machine and just run Ubuntu. I, I, I lack some of the polish when it goes, for example, things like Sublime that I use as a, as a uh, editor for web dev. Um, it doesn't seem like there's anybody really looking after those tools. So for example, I start Sublime, it starts up and there's no menus there, but the, 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 the terminal or the editors there. So I started looking around and found that, yeah, that's like a known issue. And if you run the slick, you know, the menus will appear. But that's, um, and that's, I guess that's okay when I'm in my dev mode. But when I'm in my office mode, I want to have like nice, everything nicely polished. I don't want to struggle with email or anything like that. So I like this experience that uh, uh, a Chromebook offers where I end up with like a polished experience, which is kind of, of course, very connected with Google. But at the same time, I can get into the um, to the bash prompt and and have and have a little bit more power. So let's come down here. Okay, so she just walks you through the um, Chromebook the crouton method here, and um, so it, it basically um, you install um, you do a download to a USB stick, and then you take it from there. And uh, and uh, just walk you through this. Um, one thing that happens is, and I'm not going to demo this, but just to, just to mention this, if you, if you do this to your Chromebook, is you actually end up a little bit like Microsoft done. You end up like with the dev mode for your machine. And when you uh, start up your Chromebook and you put the power on, it says OS verification is off because that's a, it looks a little bit goofy, but uh, press space to re-enable. So, don't press space to re-enable. <laughs> <coughs> I had a, I had a, let me just, I, I, I sent you, I had a friend who was like all set up to do this talk at Google, <coughs> and just, you know, like when you're setting up stuff, stuff, and you're nervous, he just hit the space bar when he started his machine, and the whole thing was gone. <laughs> in a second. Yeah. Yeah. Environment, yeah. So that's <coughs> it's it's kind of like a you have to watch out for that. When you get that back, like you go, oh shit, I did that, and you get it back. Have you lost anything underneath, or is it just the boot portion that? Okay, I, I think they they may have in, improved this, or or I've improved. I'm not sure which of this, but uh, if you if you press space to re-enable and you follow the prompt and you 
recall exactly what it says on the screen. You're going to reset your machine. It's going to wipe out your Ubuntu, which I like actually because I have the pref uh, I like to do no development, and quite often I end up like with my machine with all sorts of cross link stuff, and I can't figure out how to ch root and clean up all the all the linkages that I've screwed up and got the wrong versions of stuff on there. So I just blow it away and start over again. It's like Docker for dummies. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Okay. So, um, okay. So once you once you get through here, you, you you then actually end up with some options. You end up with like the nice. Uh, uh, you can end up with tr with trusty, and you can end up with the. Uh, what is it now? I think there's like there's two Close different modes. Yeah. With. Um, can't see it back here. With. Uh, bu 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 yeah, precise or trusty. And uh, okay, so uh, so after you've done that, okay, then you can actually uh, put do Control Alt T on your Chromebook and run shell. And actually, 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 okay, and start the environment. So anyway, let's go and do that enough slides where am I okay let's just shut that down so it is pretty resilient control T now I've got the I've got the bash bash prompt over here so this is just a as you said as you can see it's a Chromebook and now I've got this go into this crush environment and uh, You can just scroll through a couple of commands there, but that's not what you actually want. What you actually want is shell. Shell. is the shell. Thank you. <laughs> Type shell. And <coughs> so, and here, after I've typed shell, I can actually start Unity. And. You're starting your Ubuntu environment, and it should instantiate, and it comes up. It's okay. It's not. It's not too slow. <laughs> I don't think it's too slow. And <coughs> and that's going to give you uh, basically. Well, in my case, anyway. Alternative to a MacBook or a um, and let's see. I think I need to also set this up as well. Otherwise, you're not going to see what I'm seeing on the screen. Okay. Okay. Uh, displays, displays, appearances, displays. News apply. <coughs> okay. So once I've got that set up, um, I can go and run. Um, And it's it's nice because um, what, during the setup, okay, this is pretty important. Um, during the setup, it's going to ask you a number of times for a password. My recommendation is just use the same password. It's going to ask you about three times. It's going to ask you uh, what do you want to use for your uh, sort of I think your Linux environment. What do you want to use for your administrator environment? What are you going to, and then it's also going to ask you about this as well for your default. Where some people probably already knows a little bit more than why it's asking so many times. But um, if you don't, if, if you do what I do, which is you don't come back and you don't regularly use your um, your bash prompt, you're only using it to configure something in the cloud once in a while. It's kind of easy to kind of forget all the different passwords, you know, because you're supposed to use like different passwords for everything for security. Yeah, 
So I recommend you just use the same password. And otherwise, you're going to be stuck back in the same mold again, okay, where you have to uh, blow the environment away and start up and, and redo it all. Okay. So, um, so what else can we do here? Okay, well, I guess uh, we could go ahead and, uh, and get, a, get a terminal prompt. And now I got a terminal prompt and um, I could run other things in this environment. Let's see what I ran last time. I guess I ran this um, curl command and installed the uh, security for Google's cloud. So I guess I could go ahead and do that again. So um, pretty, pretty, pretty nice because you know I've got uh, the best of both worlds. I've got my, still got my Chromebook, but I've got this nice environment over here. That um, okay. Uh, I have got a touch screen, so let's see. Uh, I'm touching the screen and not much is happening. <laughs> 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 so I guess that answers that. <laughs> All right. Um, so you have any problems with sleep mode not working? Like put it to sleep while you're still in Linux, open it up and you get a nice blank screen. Um, I don't think so, I think it works okay. okay. I think this is pretty dialed in. Um, may not have been the case like about two years ago, but now it seems to like it's pretty, it's pretty robust. It's, yeah. Do you recommend not blowing away the Chrome OS? I mean, because like my, my idea is to take up a Chromebook and just blow that away and just have just a bunch of one. Show them how fast you can switch back and forth. To me, that's amazing. Well, I, I kind of don't like the press a space bar and it all goes away kind of thing. <laughs> 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 you know, if, if you blow away Chrome, maybe that goes away. <laughs> yeah, well, you got to just. <coughs> I guess there's no free lunch here. You got to watch out oh for that man. one. Um, I okay I, for the reasons that um, I don't know, who was it like a couple of years ago who said like you know this was this is the year of the uh, the Linux desktop. <coughs> I think it was like was that uh, uh, Torvald or somebody who said you know this is like and it, it never really arrived because n there was nobody really looking after the, the <coughs> user experience in the same way as they would look after a MacBook or a Windows boot. But I, so I think that the Chromebook is really that user experience we're looking for. It's like a very highly polished uh, office type experience on a, on a Linux machine. But then at the same time, so that's why I wouldn't recommend blowing it away because I think I like the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. As long as I can not press the space bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Save all your files on the disk. Yeah. So, um, I even bumped into a, a friend who was like a, a, on the AWS team on pager support and she carries around a MacBook because she's downtown in Seattle just enjoying life as a youngster and she doesn't want to have like a $3,000 MacBook in a, you know, in a backpack, she's just got a Chromebook there so if the pager goes off she can just pop that open, uh, st start up the, sh the shell and do whatever she needs to do and you know, that's, things are, things are sorted out. Okay. The gentleman over there asked me to like show you how quickly to go backwards and forwards. Let's see. I think I'm going to actually avoid that because I've forgotten how to do it. <laughs> okay, so let me just uh, see where I am with my slides. Um, the backwards and forwards, you can like, control all that arrow. Okay, so that's the. Okay, let's try that. Okay, so <coughs> I'm not sure what happened there, but. Um, You're back. I'm back. 
But I think I but I think I also exited. I don't know if I no, you're back, back in the shell. I, yeah, but I'm 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 back to my. You can still attach. Like I'm still button. attached, but but I'm. You can click your tab and go to some other window. Right. So if you do, a there you go. Okay. So let's okay. Let's let's come back and then we'll come so back to that in a moment. If you do the con shift control alt and the the other arrow direct in the other direction, you'll go back to. Okay. Mm. okay. That's a big reason to not wipe out Chrome then. That's right. right. You, you get, get run both get literally both. the same time without exiting. They're running the same together. Yeah. 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 So we have one more thing. Those are two different things. Control Alt, yeah. Control Z. Yeah. At the same time, Control Alt F1 and Control Alt F2. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, <coughs> okay. So, so let me. Let's see what time it is. How am I doing for time, folks? Let's see. Oops, I, I already ran over. So let's just see. Um, very quickly, then, just to uh, summarize here, uh, the slides are out on. Uh, um, out on uh, speaker deck, um, this is this is kind of wh what you've got. Then is these. I think, you know, if, as long as you're happy to. One thing I like to think about this way is, is uh, I like to have a nice consistent environment. As long as you're happy running Ubuntu, I guess you can now run Ubuntu on the Chromebook, run it on Windows, and those two environments are pretty much like a uh, you know a native a native Mac uh, terminal bash. Bash prompt experience. So if I need to save a few bucks, you know, my uh, I, I have some I have some options now, and I would also say that if you're a heavy DevOps uh, type person or a heavy user of a, an IDE or doing lots and lots of local work, I wouldn't really recommend that unless you're doing web development. So, or the other option I think is if especially check out Eclipse's new uh, cloud terminal. I can do some amazing things there. I can develop with uh, Python, I can develop <coughs> with Java, it, perhaps a little bit more for the web, but th those, are, those are tools that are available to me. Um, let's see. Okay. So I had a little panic there because I thought we were up at uh, four o'clock and I was going over, but no, it's still good. So, um, okay, another, another tool that I set up, okay, let's go and see if I can show you this, is Carrot, what else do I want to show you? Um, Eclipse is Chai, and, or is it Che or? Che. Che, okay. And, um, I think, like, you know, one way, another way, another way I think about this is it all comes down to like uh, better software faster. So not so much like figuring out which is the um, which is the best machine, but figuring out which is like a, a reasonable machine to do the type of development I'm doing. So if I'm doing uh, mm. Firebase development, which is you know sort of a Google Cloud for now environment, uh, I think I think I can get I can sweep by using a Chromebook for that. Uh, because a lot of the time I can just stay in the in the web in the web environment and, and just pop out to um, to the to the terminal to use uh, the G Cloud uh, and Firebase uh, command line utilities and probably do the same thing with uh, with with AWS as well. So um, let's see if we can okay. You gentlemen were right there about this, uh, you know, switching between the environments, which is, here's my shell. So let's see if I can leave that again and, and actually go and show you a uh, carrot. Okay, let's see. doing that there's also utilities where you can do cut and paste between the two 
environment as well. Yeah, and it I usually certainly will get it to work though. Okay. She, she has that in her doco about how to set that up, and I thought I had that set up. I think what happened last week was I was one of those people that got the, uh, anybody else get that? Did you get that uh, message that said, you know, give permissions to your to, to, to Google Gmail, to email? And, um, and if you clicked on that, it was like somebody was like taking all your contacts out of you. Okay, you got, saw that. Okay, so I... I, of course, I got that message and I clicked on it, and then, like a couple of seconds later, I realized, ah, somebody's like, I just got hosed. Somebody like just stole my identity or something. So I quickly went into and um, um, looked up and actually removed the service that I'd enabled. And I think I'd probably also removed the, the service for, for Carrot, although. Okay. Um. See, and where was I going with that? Yeah. So I think actually um, that's pretty much what I got here. Um, one other thing I like to do with this as well is I'm now I'm in the, the Chrome. I'm going to go to the, the Cloud Console. Google's Cloud Console. And I guess this would be the same with AWS or... Um, So once I've got this going, I have a few a few projects over here, and of course, they have um, App Engine, and they also have uh, Compute Engine. Let's see if I look at my projects. Um, I have uh, this particular project. If my CPU is currently switched off, but if I go to the Compute Engine. I can actually uh, start this environment <coughs> up, start up the VM, and once that comes up, it's started over here. That's going to give me another option to have a bash prompt. And but this is a, a bash prompt in the cloud, but administered from my from my Chromebook. And once I've got this set up, I find this is pretty convenient to do uh, node type development. Um, so I should see once this um, it's connecting to this, once this is all set up, I should be able to get the bash prompt and uh, operate the node environment and set up every, everything that I need to do there. So that's um, okay. Can you guys can just be logged on to your machine and just talk right now and see what it looks like? Yeah. So I'm I'm logged on using uh, the Chromebook to log on to you know to this to this environment. Yeah, so if that's probably what's going on, yeah. Um, <coughs> so, uh, would anybody else like to uh, chip in there or uh, throw? Yeah, you know, I'll erase this so I get time out. But um, okay. I would love to see what Sublime looks like. Hopefully, I'm not the only one. What it looks like over the uh, Ubuntu side. Is it, you mentioned having some sort of problem with the menus. Yeah, let's see if we can go over there and do, go back there and do that. Okay. So I think I have uh, Sublime here. So let's see what happens. So it comes up, but uh, it uh, misses its menu. Aren't, aren't they up there if you have your mouse over Sublime text? Uh, top left. Top left. 
Yeah, right there. Yeah. Okay. That's that's Unity. So is that Unity just the, the desktop environment which is doing that? Yeah, I, I never, they tried to figure out the worst possible thing to do. <laughs> so they copied Mac, but they hid it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it, it, you just have a little thing that says Sublime, and then when you mouse over that, oh, pop, there's your menu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, he's, he's running the Ubuntu environment, and so he's got the default. You could also run Exubuntu, you could also run, you know, whatever. So I can I can run the different environments, but it, it would stop me like upgrading my my base my base Ubuntu, even though I, I did it. I kind of close the machine. In Crouton, you can go beyond the trusty fourteen oh four one. You can go to sixteen oh four, but the the Unity one is buggy. But ah. if you install uh, XFCE or something, it works fine. Oh, okay, so that's good to know. XFCE is <coughs> Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> it's, it's it's just unity and it's a screw up. So one other, one other thing, uh, I thought I had got this installed. I thought I had VS Code installed on this as well because uh, that's pretty nifty that uh, Microsoft has now uh, open sourced their, their part of Visual Studio. So I can actually run that on this environment, which is kind of Im Im amazing if you think about it. It's a Chromebook with an Ubuntu, which is kind of lit, which is Linux. And I'm running Visual Studio. It's like I'm going backwards, in, or somehow in time, or I'm like going backwards to go forwards. Um, or at least I've got like a, 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 a mixed environment there where everybody's somehow figuring out how to work <laughs> together, which is nice. It's given me some options. And obviously, I've been around for a while, and uh, you used to have to pay like an arm and a leg for it. Visual Studio, and then it sort of became a little bit sort of free. You could figure out how to get it for free, but now it's available as open source. So again, again, I've got some um, nice options for my environment. So that is uh, that is pretty much just. Um, I think that's actually as much as I've got, folks. Um, I would, uh, I, st I think this is a valid, I think this is a valid option for you. I really recommend, uh, especially this young lady's uh, doco here. There's lots of other doco on how to crute on your Chromebook, but it's 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 sort of it's a, it has its it's sort of has legs back to 2011, and people have like copy and pasted and they drop little bits off. And, sh and there's also been a lot of optimization things that covers all these optimizations. So for example, the, the one that uh, the gentleman asked about over here about how you um, can copy and paste text between Chromebook and, and Ubuntu, right. between those environments. She's got that dialed in there. And, uh, and then also, if you're, not, if you're new to, to um, Ubuntu, uh, when you actually install it, for example, something like this, the terminal itself uh, comes up by default fairly tiny. You can hardly even see it. The text is like so small. So you need to know like what is the shortcut to larging out the, the, the text. So she has a couple of things or comments added to the bottom of that blog post that cover those important things. So you, um, <coughs> if you're coming to this from, I think, like a, a beginner's mode, and you've you've got a Chromebook, and you'd like, and you want to do more development, um, then I think there's uh, there's, a, there's a way to do this. But if you're a professional software developer, um, you're probably going to still be better off. Maybe even as the gentleman said here, just you know, getting um, uh, using a, a more a more uh, native environment rather than using a hybrid. 
but for web developers like myself and for people that are doing cloud development you know, or hybrid, I think we're at the point right now where, yeah, this, this Chromebook will cut mustard. Um, all right. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks for being a great audience. Could you uh, shut the lid and then like reopen it? I want to see how the sleep works with this. How okay. well? I mean, because I know you're running the hybrid. Oh well, yeah, it's <laughs> did one of those. But <laughs> okay, I should it properly. <coughs> hmm, looks like it didn't really probably go to sleep. It's because it's, it's video. yeah. Oh, it's because the video. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I, I could never get the uh, video plug to work on the unit side. I have to always go back to Chrome OS to get the video on it. Oh, okay. Hmm. Uh, I'm on, that may be hardware to change it. I'm sorry, at least the C300. Okay. Cool. Thanks for the talk, by the way. Sure, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, Hi. I have a question. Yep. Um, and this is something where I'm, I'm really defaulting to your judgment and experience. You, you talked about having a $288 Chromebook. This is a $150 one. Mm. This is the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> this came from Walmart. I, I love it. It's so great because it's compact. It's small. I can put it in my purse and take it on an airplane without needing a separate laptop bag. And the battery I've lasts? Yeah, yeah, so far so good. Mm -hmm. um, I primarily just use it for word processing and email, but I would love to have a command line on it. My question is performance. Is Proton going to slow it down? No, it's not going to slow it down. No. Really? No. Yeah, true that e so even if it's not dual boot, even if they're running at the same time? Um, um, really, I mean, Ubuntu can be power hungry uh, in the form of resources, but not as much as one would think, let's say, in Windows. Yeah. Windows yeah. is far more yeah. Maybe if you set something running from the terminal, sure. you know, that using if, a lot yeah. of, but if it's just there, yeah, and it's, it's just, just there, in the it's just there is it yeah. ready to go. So it's, it's basically the equivalent of having terminal on my MacBook. Yeah, yeah. Linux yeah. is really nice about putting things to sleep. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great, great, because this is not something with a lot of resources and to spare. Yeah. That thing runs a version of Linux faster. It's a switch down Gen 2. Yeah. Wow, who knew? Yeah. <laughs> Cool. And look at that as well. You've got an HDMI uh, port in there, so you're ready to go with, you know, to present, and uh -huh. you can put it onto a big screen if you're at a hotel or something. Excellent. The the nice uh, 1500 MacBook that I purchased has got one USB-C port that doesn't seem to be compatible <laughs> with just about anything. Yeah, <laughs> oh, no. they've been stripping no. down. I don't know what it is about ports. They must be really, really expensive to manufacture. <laughs> USB-C <laughs> ports are just really new. Yeah. Yeah. Also, by the way, as per the uh, not wanting to do a dual boot or even wipe it away, one big thing against it is you actually have to open it up physically and take out a specific screw. If you don't know what you're doing, you can ruin it, and once you open it up, you forget the warranty anyway. Okay. So that's a big thing. Ah, okay. That. And so you can, okay, I got you. You, you will void warranty upon opening the thing. So okay. That's why anyone but tinkerers would not go that route. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. Thanks. If you want I a cheaper Chromebook for your high-end model, this one, 700 bucks for an i5 with 8 gig of RAM. Nice. It's actually faster than the HP one you listed. Really? Apparently. Who made this one? Dell. This is the yeah. Dell Chromebook 13. Oh. Can you get that on okay. Dell's website? Yes. Nice. They so that's that's pretty nice because I, I actually mean, noticed that G Google is <laughs> are using those now. Yeah, these, they're these really. Yeah. Even the engineering managers are, are, to, are using these, yeah. these Dells. I had the C720, the Acer one, but I kept running out of memory because okay. I'm like, I want to run Gen 2 and you're compiling so something. How much, how much RAM does this one have? Eight. Eight. Okay, eight's pretty nice. Yep. Well, thanks for, for oh. putting this together. Okay. I saw, I've seen your, you run the Seattle Google mm -hmm. group. Yeah, it's been a couple years since I've made it over, but... Would, would that group ever be interested in like a little demo of getting started with Google Apps script that would help make things nicer for the group? Um, we actually had a talk a long time ago on, on Apps script, so long ago that I think we, you know, we're, we're ready for another talk. 